So if I had to rank my favorite albums of all time, Born This Way would definitely be in the top five. It came out in a very important time in my life. It was released on May 23rd, 2011, meaning I was 16 years old and just finishing out my sophomore year of high school. Me at 16 years old, I knew I was very much and I was very accepting of it, of myself. But I was definitely still in the closet because I had very religious parents. I didn't want people to know, even though the closet was definitely made out of glass. Prior to Born This Way, I was definitely a huge fan of Lady Gaga. Her first two singles, Just Dance and Poker Face, were huge hits. I loved them both. They both reached number one on the Billboard charts, which was like a huge thing for a new artist to have their first two singles hit number one. And let's not even talk about her unreleased music. Like, what do you know about Take You Out? What do you know about Earthquake? And what do you know about Nothing On But The Radio? I mean, I think people know about it now because Addison Rae has actually just released her like debut EP and Nothing On But The Radio is on there and it like leaked months ago and people was like, oh my God, this is a bop, this is a bop. And I was just like, this is when I realized I am getting old because I'm like, I remember this being an unreleased Gaga track. I'm pretty sure it was supposed to be on Born This Way and it was scrapped, and I think it was also supposed to be on Art Pop, but it was scrapped. So I'm glad you kitties are enjoying Addison Rae's version, but the real ones, no. Let me not, <laughs> let me not be an annoying millennial, even though I consider myself a zillennial because girl, I feel like I'm too young to be a millennial, but also too old to be Gen Z. I'm in the middle, okay? <laughs> But yeah, I was always a huge Lady Gaga fan, but the moment I became a stan was when she performed Paparazzi at the 2009 VMAs. Like, everything about that performance was perfection. The theatrics, the vocals, the dance. When she started bleeding at the end, and you can hear the crowd literally gasp at it, like... No one is doing that anymore. She was a brand new artist. This was her first VMA performance and she literally gave the performance of a lifetime top five VMA performance of all time, probably top five award show performance. Like it's everything and more. And Paparazzi is one of my favorite Lady Gaga songs. Like two years ago, I was on a solo road trip and that song came on and I literally started to bawl cry because of all the memories it brought up. I just love that song so much. Now that I was a stan, a little monster, if you will, I followed Lady Gaga's every move. I was here for the Fame Monster when it released. I was one of the people who crashed her site when the Bad Romance video first like launched and went on there. Telephone was life changing. I was a new Lady Gaga stan, but I've been a Beyonce stan since birth, like since 94. So like my two faves coming together and putting out this incredible song, this incredible music video was everything. And ladies, we are still waiting on a part two. Like, what are y'all doing? Y'all said to be continued. Where's the continuation? Get in the studio, get in the booth. We need it. Also video phone, Beyonce song with Lady Gaga, the remix version or whatever. So good. And then we also had Alejandro, which was an iconic song. That song changed my life too. I say that a lot, but like as a young gay guy, like I just, I just, I don't even know how to explain it. I literally cannot put it into words how much a lot of these songs meant to me. Like that whole Fame Monster EP turned album, like Dancing in the Dark, I Still Cry at Speechless, like it was everything. All this to say, Lady Gaga had literally taken over my life, but not just my life. She literally took over the entire world. And going into her third album release, she had a lot of hype to live to. The first single off of Born This Way will be the titular song called Born This Way. It was released on February 23rd, 2011, three days before she would perform it at the 53rd annual Grammys. Her arrival to the Grammys would shock and stun everyone because she literally arrived to the red carpet in an egg. <laughs> in an egg. I don't know why I said egg like that. In an egg. That was another thing about Lady Gaga's early career. Like people waited at bated breath for her looks that she would give on the red carpet. Like every look was something iconic. Every look was spark a conversation. Like we all was here for Lady Gaga's looks. Like do we remember the meat dress? Born This Way would receive positive reviews and it would literally become a gay anthem. The song reached number one on the Billboard Hot 100 and was actually the 1000th number one song since the Billboard's inception. However, the song did receive a lot of criticism. There's only two main criticisms that's worth noting and I feel like it's probably the only two criticisms. Number one is the religious girlies. Like the religious girlies was always in a chokehold when it came to Lady Gaga. Like anything she did was seen as blasphemous, 
disrespectful Illuminati. Like, <laughs> the Illuminati ran rampant in the early 2010s, I'm telling you. Like, I saw a tweet a while back that was like, if your fave, like your pop fave, did not get any Illuminati, like, conspiracies, like, were they really popping? Because all the popping artists was being claimed to be parts of the Illuminati. Like, if you weren't in that conversation, then you were kind of a flop. So we're not even going to talk about the religious controversy because who cares? I want to talk about the rampant comparisons that Lady Gaga got to Madonna. Now we all know Madonna, for better or worse, like, I just don't pay attention to the shenanigans she gives us today because, girl, I'm trying to remember your legacy because I'm actually, like, a really big Lady Gaga fan, I guess you can call it. Like, I got into her when she performed at the Super Bowl, I believe, in 2012, and I went back and listened to her old catalog, and it's very good, like, top-tier catalog, especially her 80s and 90s, even her 2000s, like, good catalog. But when Lady Gaga came onto the scene, a lot of people really compared to both of them. They kind of had like a similar style. Lady Gaga was all about female empowerment, like sexual liberation. She had a lot of religious tones in her music and Madonna had kind of that same tone in her music as well. So when Born This Way came out, people draw similarities in the course to Madonna's 1989 song, Express Yourself. Express Yourself came from her Like a Prayer album, which if you can just see from the title, had a lot of religious imagery in it. Like a Prayer, I think is like my second favorite Madonna album. Number one would be Ray of Light, but Like a Prayer is definitely a really good album. I feel like it still holds up to this day, so I feel like people should check it out if you haven't. So yeah, a lot of people felt like the course of Born This Way sounded a lot like the course of Express Yourself, which I can hear it, but like other than that, there's really no comparison. And Madonna didn't make it any better when on her MDNA tour, she performed Express Yourself and then did a little snippet of Born This Way. And then she also did a snippet of her song, She's Not Me from her Hard Candy album. Like girl, calm down sister. Like why can't y'all both live in harmony and perfection? But I mean, that happens a lot. Like remember when people compared Ariana Grande to Mariah Carey, like it happens. <laughs> Either way, the Born This Way video will come out a few weeks after the song, and girl, I'm not gonna sit here and explain it because I feel like, one, I'm just not intellectually like ready to do all of that, and two, I'm pretty sure there's other videos on YouTube that'll explain the music video a lot better than me, so just know it's about birth. I don't know. <laughs> Either way, we'll get two more singles before the album came out, and that would be Judas and Edge of Glory. Now, Judas came out in April of 2011, and remember when I said she had the religious girlies in a chokehold? It continued, and it got even worse here. <laughs> Judas is literally about the man that portrayed Jesus, which was Judas, obviously, and the song is pretty much about falling in love with someone you shouldn't be in love with, like, because they're not a good person. <laughs> but people really didn't take the song for what it meant. They just saw Judas, they saw a man who was playing Jesus, Jesus, they saw Lady Gaga in very revealing clothing, dancing, and it was like, oh, this is blasphemous. And I'm just like, girl, it's not that deep. Nobody is coming for your religion. Like, like I'm glad that's kind of stopped lately. I feel like we don't really get many like religious folks up in arms about pop music anymore, but back then it happened a lot. But in the music video, Lady Gaga plays Mary Magdalene. We also have the Jesus figure played by Rick Gonzalez, who is fine as hell, one. And two, I know he's been in a lot of stuff, but like the most notable movie he's been in for me is Coach Carter. Like, I love that movie so much. <laughs> and then we also have the namesake of the music video, Judas, who is played by Norman Reedus, who was fresh off the first season of The Walking Dead. The music video was co-directed by Lady Gaga herself and her then choreographer, Lorianne Boom Cack Gibson. I always forget that Lorianne was her choreographer in her early days. A lot of people may know Lorianne, like newer Lorianne from her stint on Dance Moms. I think she did like the later season, like after Abby Lee went to prison. <laughs> but we know Lorianne from making the band on MTV. She was the choreographer for those groups and she gave us many legendary moments on that show. Let's go back. Taquita, I'm not giving you this. 
final single before the album's release will be Edge of Glory. It came out on May 9th, 2011, and it is one of my favorite Lady Gaga songs. Critics really love this song as well, and a lot of critics to this day still say that Edge of Glory is like top five of Lady Gaga's entire discography of her entire career. Like, that's how much people really love this song. The song was about Lady Gaga spending her final moments with her dying grandfather at the time, but, you know, listeners can really put in any loved one in this scenario. Like, for me personally, I used to always think about my grandmother who passed away maybe about seven or eight months prior to this song coming out and also my great-grandmother who passed away a little bit over a year before the song came out so I would think about them a lot when I listen to this song and I would cry but I mean I'm an emotional bitch I'm a water sign I'm a Scorpio that's just what we do. The music video will come out in June, and after a dispute with the original director, Lady Gaga's team, House of Gaga, would go on to direct the music video. The original music video was a lot more grand than the, you know, music video we got, but I really feel like the music video we got was perfect for the song. It was very simple. It was just Lady Gaga kind of dancing in the New York streets on a fire escape. You know, she's from New York, that's her town, that's her city, so it made sense. The music video also featured well-renowned saxophonist Clarence Clemens, and sadly he would pass away just a few days after the music video would come out, which kind of shook me up when I was younger, not gonna lie. So with all the pre-release singles being released and being well-received, the album had a lot of shoes to fill, and honestly, I feel like she filled them. And also, you know how when your like toes reach the front of a shoe, she like did that and then like pushed her toes through the shoe. So now her toes are sticking out of the shoe. That's how much of the shoe she filled with this album. So now I'm gonna go song by song on the album and just kind of give my opinion on them. And to make it a little bit more fun, I'm gonna rank the songs as I go. So let's start with number one, Marry the Night. Now, Mary the Night has always been my favorite song on the album. Up until I did this ranking list, which, which you know, I'm not gonna spoil it, but right now we're gonna put Mary the Night at number one, obviously, it's the first song. And it's always been one of my favorites. I love the song. I remember when the album came out, I was like, this really needs to be a single because I need a music video for this. And luckily for me, you know, just like Magic, I, you know, manifested it and it happened because this would actually become a single. We would get a music video. The music video is pretty much like a story of Lady Gaga's life. I mean, I, like I said, I just feel like I'm not too intellectually tuned in right now to explain it. But we did get a lot of different scenes in the music video. We got her in a clinic, we got her in like a messy apartment dyeing her hair like this blue teal color, which kind of reminds me of a mermaid, which kind of reminds me of the you and I video, which was before this one, which we'll talk about that later. We also saw her dancing around a flaming car. We also saw her getting into a car with a very heavy hat and she looks at her hand and she has like Interscope Records, Hollywood, California, 4 p.m., which is her record label, which insinuates that she was on her way to either meet with her record label or, you know, pitch herself. So yeah, I really love this song and music video and yeah, number one, Mary Tonight. Number two on the album is Born This Way and since we already talked about it, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it at number two. Number three is Government Hooker and if you were around prior to the album coming out, then you will know that this song actually leaked before the album came out. I'm pretty sure the album leaked as a whole. I feel like albums back then leaked a lot more than they do now. I remember my friend messaging me on Facebook with the link to the leaked version of Government Hooker and was like, you need to listen to this. And you know, nowadays I won't listen to leaks of albums. Like when Renaissance leaked like a day or two before the album came out, I didn't listen to that because I have morals and values and I don't believe in listening to a leaked version of a product that an artist did not, you know, co-sign. But me at 16, I didn't give no fucks, so obviously I listened and I loved it. It starts off with this like operatic tone she's singing in. And then it gets into like this heavy synth pop like just song and it's so Good. But this song pretty much describes female sexual empowerment through the eyes of Marilyn Monroe, who was rumored to have been having an affair with John F. Kennedy, the president. And we hear like her kind of talking in like a man's voice throughout the song. I really like the song. In the rankings, we're gonna put it at number two. 
Number four on the album is Judas, and since we already discussed it, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it right behind Mary the Night on the rankings. Number five is Americano, and I feel like this was a Tumblr fave. Like, during this era of my life, as well as me being a huge, you know, Lady Gaga stan, I was also a huge tumblr -er. Like from like 2010 to like 2013, I was heavy into Tumblr. And I feel like Americano was like a Tumblr fave. I feel like I saw a lot of the lyrics like put up on like a very aesthetic photo, you know? You know what I'm talking about. But yeah, Americano has like this kind of Spanish influence on it. And the lyrics of the song discusses the Prop 8 law in California, which was a ban on same-sex marriage that was passed in 2008, but it was actually overturned in 2010. And the song also discusses the various immigration laws that immigrants have to deal with primarily immigrants from Mexico because for some odd reason that's the only immigrants that America seems to care about but you know what we're not gonna go there in the rankings we are gonna put it at number three number six is hair and oh my god I love this song like when I was younger for some odd reason I just really wanted to be a pop star like I feel like I can sing but like, I don't like to sing in front of people because it's so embarrassing. One thing I can't do is dance. I'm not a dancer. Like, I feel like I have a rhythm. That's even a stretch. But like, I wanted to be a pop star so bad and this song was my song. Like, I used to imagine myself performing this at an award show with my lack of hair and just whip it around like Willow Smith. Like, I love this song. It gives off that 80s rock vibe, which a lot of the songs on this album gives off, but this one does it really well. I love the post-chorus with like the distorted like hair sounds. Not hair sounds, but her singing hair like in this distorted voice. The bridge of the song is immaculate. I am obsessed with the song. In the rankings, I am gonna put this at number two. Number seven is Shizub. Shizub. I hope I'm saying that right. I still can't say this song's titles right almost 12 years later. We love the German representation, even though I feel like people did not like this song because of the fact that she just kind of made up German words and she also spoke in this horrible German accent. However, this was a bop. It's very fun. For some odd reason, I think of Destiny's Child during the chorus. I don't know if that's just me. Anyway, we are gonna put this song at number three. We love her. Number eight is Bloody Mary, and this is another one of the songs that had the religious girlies in a chokehold. Either way, this song is very spooky, very chill, very like, whatever this movement means in words, that's what it's giving. The spookiness and haunting nature of this song would be the reason why this song would rise in popularity 11 years later on fucking TikTok of all places. So if you guys don't remember, like towards the end of last year, the TV series Wednesday was released on Netflix, which is about Wednesday Adams from the Adams Family. She's kind of weird. She dresses in all black. She's gothic as hell. And a scene from the TV series where she's like at a school dance and she's dancing, I'm trying to explain this the best way I can because I actually never watch Wednesday, don't shoot me, but I've never seen it. But I've seen like the TikToks, she's dancing, and in the background of the TikToks is like a sped up version of Bloody Mary. And because of the rise of these different TikToks, it caused a surge in streams on Spotify and they ended up releasing Bloody Mary as the sixth and final single from Born This Way on December 2nd, 2022, 11 years after the album came out, which I just think is insane. Like, I'm so old. <laughs> like I was here when this song came out originally and I'm here again talking about it 11 years later as a single. I'm not actually old y'all, I'm 28. I'll be 29 in like three months. I guess I am old compared to most people on the internet, but you know what? You're only as old as you feel. Is that the phrase? I don't know. When it comes to the ranking, I'm gonna put it at number four. Number nine is Black Jesus, I'm in fashion. And I feel like this was another Tumblr fave. I always kind of knew that this wasn't my favorite song off the album. I do still like it, but it's not my fave. The song is like a love letter to like fashion and also Jesus, I guess. Did you know when you say something is the new black, that pretty much means something is like the new trend or you know, the new fashion statement. So in the song, she does say Jesus is new black. So I'm like, does that mean Jesus? This is like the new wave. Big wave, big wave. Shout out to Nmix. Either way, 
I like this song, but it's definitely not my favorite. I'm going to put it at the bottom of the list. Number 10 is Bad Kids. And you know, I lived vicariously through the lyrics of this song because I was kind of a nerd. Like, <laughs> I was a goody choo-choos. I did not choo shoes why did i say it like that i was a goody two shoes i didn't really get in trouble the only times i really got in trouble was like at home when i just didn't like do my chores on time but other than that like i got good grades i didn't get in trouble at school i lived a straight and narrow path i didn't drink for the first time until i was 21 i didn't do any type of drug for the first time until like three years ago like i'm kind of a loser but in this song the kids that she's speaking about in the song are bad kids but are misunderstood you know they're not really bad they're just kind of like living in this shitty world and like i think in the song like their parents got divorced and like they're just like trying to find themselves maybe not in the best or healthy ways but you know trying to just live live but I really do love this song. I'm gonna put it at number seven on the rankings. Number 11 is Fashion of His Love. And getting to this song, I forgot to mention at the beginning of the ranking that I'm gonna be ranking the special edition of the album, which included three bonus songs, because this was the version I listened to when I was younger. And Fashion of His Love is the second of the three special songs. The first one was Black Jesus, I'm in Fashion. So yeah, this isn't on the normal version of the album. This is only on the special edition, which, you know, it's the better version, obviously. I love Fashion of is love it's definitely giving that 80s fun vibe i don't know if this song actually samples this song or not but the chorus of this song sounds a lot like i want to dance with somebody by whitney houston which is iconic right This song was actually dedicated to Alexander McQueen, who was an iconic fashion designer who passed away a little over a year before this album came out. And you know, this was just a dedication to him. This song also sampled, I don't know if you call it a sample or not, but like it also took a little snippet from her unreleased song, Earthquake. which I, as a fan, loved because I loved Earthquake and having her put it into this song was just perfect. I've always loved this song though. It's fun, it's flirty, it's 80s. I love it. I'm gonna put it at number six on the rankings. Number 12 is Highway Unicorn, in parentheses, Road to Love, which sidebar, that's something really weird that I love about song titles is when they put like parentheses in it. I don't know why, I just kind of love that. As I mentioned with Married and Night, that was always my number one favorite song off of Born This Way. But doing this ranking and listening back to the album, I think this might be my favorite song. I love Highway Unicorn. I love the intro. I love a good intro on any song. Like I literally go into a new dimension when this song comes on. The outro. <laughs> I know I literally highlighted the intro in the outro, but this outro is incredible. The drums, it just literally, you, I literally float. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring but this song. I love it. We're putting this song at number one. Number 13 is Heavy Metal Lover. And by the title, you would think that this was like heavy metal. But this is probably the chillest song on the album. Like it's very laid back. It's giving like kickback with your homies, smoking a doobie. <laughs> smoking a doobie. Who fucking says that? I'm such a fucking loser. But like it's, like, it's giving kickback. It's giving chill. It's giving like vibes and... I love it. I don't think it's everyone's cup of tea, but it's definitely mine. So I'm gonna put it number eight. So number 14 is Electric Chapel. And I feel like this song would be another song that could definitely fit in that Wednesday aesthetic. It's very like gothic. It's very churchy. The churchy is called Electric Chapel. But like this album really toys around with this rock elements, but this one like really dives into it. Like it's definitely like fully a rock song. And once again, like I mentioned with Highway Unicorn, the outro of the song. I probably look ugly from, from this angle. Why do I keep doing this? I'm gonna put this song at number 10. Number 15 is The Queen. And honestly, this song is like the tale of two songs. Like the first half of the song is pretty much what we've heard throughout this entire album. We are on number 15 out of 17. This would have been kind of like a middle tier, maybe even possibly lower tier on this album until we get to the second half of the song 
when it slows down and we get like this nice guitar ballad towards the end oh it's so good once again i'm not gonna do it again because i think i look ugly from that angle but it literally takes me to a new dimension i love the second half of this song It really carries it out of that lower tier on this album, so I'm gonna put it like right in the middle at number eight. Number 15 is You and I, and this was the fourth single of the album, so the first single after the release of the album. And once again, so good. I love a good ballad. This was once again another like heavy kind of rock inspired. I believe it actually samples We Will Rock You by Queen, and the guitarist from Queen actually was with Lady Gaga at the 2011 VMAs when she performed this as her alter ego, Joe Calderon. Like the entire show, she arrived at the red carpet as Joe, she was in the audience as Joe and she performed as Joe. Like Lady Gaga really like was dedicated. Like I feel like we're seeing that a lot more now. Like there's a lot of new artists who's like really into it, but Lady Gaga was like into it. This is some professional like and this this is in different areas. What the This ain't no homemade but yeah, I really love this song. You and I is really great. I'm putting this at number 4 on the rankings. The final song on the album is Edge of Glory, and since we already discussed it, we're just gonna go ahead and throw it on the rankings list, and I'm gonna put it at the top, not all the way at the top, but like towards the top of the list at number six. So looking at the final track rankings, I feel like Born This Way suffered for being the first single. Like I have it at the bottom of the list, but it's definitely not the worst song on the album, so we're gonna move it a couple spots up. And this is a reminder, okay? No Beyonce, this is a reminder, my opinion only. Like, I know my opinion is very important because I'm just an important person on YouTube and in the world in general, but it's my opinion. I would love to see your rankings though in the comments. Like, what's your favorite song? What's your least favorite? What's your memories from this album? I would literally love to hear that in the comments, but please don't flame me, don't roast me, don't me. <laughs> I shouldn't even said that because now people are gonna do it. But don't come for me because your favorite song's at the bottom. Like, girl, is my opinion. If you wanna fight me, like, pull up. Born This Way really changed my life, honestly. I don't want to get emotional, but I've been in a very nostalgic mood over the past like year or two, just because adulting is hard, okay? Being an adult is hard. You go into this routine of going to work, coming home, eating, maybe watching something on TV and going to sleep and repeating that cycle. And it makes you miss being a kid just because you didn't have all this responsibility. Really, all you did was go to school. That was your main responsibility. But you really just hung out with friends, listened to fun music, played video games all day. And I've been missing that a lot lately just because I'm going through some hard times in life. So listening to this album really just takes me back to a time where I was happier and just not as you know, in tune with how shitty the world is. So thank you Lady Gaga for making this album. You know, after this album came out, she would come out with Art Pop, which a lot of people talk shit about for literally no reason, cause it's a great album. And honestly, I may do a video on that album as well. Yeah, Lady Gaga, you will always be famous. You are an icon, you are a legend. Thank you. That's gonna be it for today's video. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, all that great stuff. You already know, subscribing is free as hell. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, all that good stuff. I'll see y'all next time. Bye. Don't be a drag. Just be a queen. That was so corny. Bye.